This is the first time we feature the panorama of private boarding school in the US by perspectives which are unpired, unfiltered, intellectual, inspirational, and visionary. Now is the time to look back at the amazing things of the whole season. The high school years are the most important time for students to develop their identity. It's probably the most formative time. And the nice thing about boarding school, too, is you have the opportunity to make choices. And I think that's one of the great things. You're not with mom and dad all day long. <laughs> and so you have the ability to make a choice. And in those choices, our students inevitably make mistakes. They, often, they sometimes will make a poor choice. And so what it, our job is, is to help them understand and to learn from those mistakes. And so it isn't failure. In fact, we hope that they will make mistakes and be able to learn from it. Mm -hmm. What it, my challenge would be is if somebody makes the same mistake over and over and over again. That is not learning. What learning is, is making a mistake, analyzing it, reflecting upon that, changing one's behavior and one's path forward, and then uh, growing from that. The most important thing we can do in the high school years is to help our students become more of themselves, to figure out who they are, what matters to them, what motivates them, what kind of friend they want to be. And so through that process of understanding themselves, they're really sharpening their focus on how they can serve the world beyond high school, mm -hmm. beyond college, beyond graduate school, and make a meaningful impact and live a good life. And there's lots of ways to define a good life, but we, we believe that it has to come from the inside first, rather than being about externalities like grades or a particular sports season performance. I mean, those things matter but they're usually rooted in a child really knowing themselves. A huge part of our school's mission has to do with empowering young girls mm -hmm. to become global citizens. We want our students to feel empowered to change the world, whether that's change their immediate community in which they go on to live, change their college campus community, work on a more local level, work on a global level. We know that we are sending Dana Hall graduates out into the world in order to make a difference. And in order for them to feel that they can do that, they need to be empowered in the here and now. And so we do a lot at Dana Hall School to allow our students to explore their passions, to exert agency, so that they can be the change makers of the future. We're clearly thinking about what the student's academic profile is. Uh, we have a, a data set that shows how students with particular grades or test scores or things like that have fared in different colleges in terms of their admission success. And we're also trying to help students in this process understand what it is that they want from the college process. This is really one of the first times, probably in a student's life, where they're faced with a major life choice mm -hmm. and we want to help them make a great choice for them. So what is their interest? Where do they want to be located geographically? What are the kinds of programs they might consider pursuing uh, in future years? So it's, it's a balance, rather, of the things that they're interested in, uh, their academic success, and trying to make a good match for them between what, what a college and university might be looking for, as well as what they're looking for. If you're spending your time constantly trying to think ahead what that thing's going to be and prepare for it, you, you, you're always going to be chasing a mirage or something that's very, very hard to do. What you actually have to do is fall back on basic principles, basic ideas of preparing students to be flexible so they're ready for the changes that are, are, are going to happen, to be thoughtful, be able to think for themselves and not just be given material and just repeat it back. Actually be able to take material from various different places bring it together, produce new ideas, to be creative, because if you think where AI is going, some of the least creative jobs are, are gonna be the ones that disappear. But the things where you can bring ideas from four or five different places, connect people, the human connections, those things are, are gonna matter. I think it's gonna matter to be of great character, to be able to make important moral and ethical decisions. And I think it's critically important for our students to be resilient, to be able to battle through 
challenges uh, to not fade away when the first difficult moment comes. Is it generative AI? Is it virtual reality? Is it politics? Is it Those things become less important than just readiness for the unpredictability. We want our students to be admitted to the top universities as we want them to go on and live lives of purpose and meaning. And, and so a lot of our high school program is about helping them to develop the skills they need to do that. Uh, that is everything from critical thinking, problem solving, creativity in the classroom, but it's also how you build a community around yourself that enables you to take on really hard things. It's also how you handle failure and know mm -hmm. that you can be resilient. That's also how innovation happens, right? You can't be afraid to fail and be an innovator and be a change maker. So we want our students to have you know, really um, tough experiences that they overcome. So I think that builds confidence and it's important for them to have that. I think boys are struggling in general. In many ways, boys are being left behind, and we need to focus more on their needs. And we've made lots of changes to our program. We've changed our schedule in the last two years. We've bring, brought in different speakers to help them sort of through some of the challenges and, and the pressures that they face. And we'll continue to evolve to meet those needs for our kids and, and just having a supportive environment for them to feel comfortable, to feel safe, and have the ability to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. that's important. And this world needs strong leaders. Mm -hmm. Strong leaders need to be vulnerable. And it's important because in today's world, we see students that are struggling because of the pressures, right, to get into good colleges. They're more anxious than they've ever been. And a lot of the times the faculty get up and talk about a struggle that they've had. And mm -hmm. they be vulnerable. And so when you are vulnerable in front of the boys, you give them the ability to be vulnerable back. Yeah. And so you'll see it time and time again about people showing their vulnerability and then the support behind them is amazing. You can tell what a school values by how they spend time because time is finite mm -hmm. and time is king on these campuses. So Suffield sets aside time every day for its leadership program. It sets aside an hour for a community sit-down lunch with assigned seating. We're using those times to build a sense of community and um, health for our students and uh, faculty and, and the Suffield family. So um, Suffield is very intentional about its academic schedule. We have three 10-week terms. Mm -hmm. When we are in school, it is exceptionally busy. Saturday feels identical to Monday or Tuesday. It's school and sports and it's full immersion in the life of the school. But that gives us 20 weeks where we're not in session. So students who are traveling far for March break or for the summer months mm -hmm. have that time to re-energize and come back totally focused on the many demands of academic life here. What else do our students need to need to learn for the future? And and I think you know without a better term, the soft skills, right? I don't, I don't really like that term to think about, like because I think they're almost the mo most important skills: communication, emotional intelligence, understanding and managing your own emotions, being able to work with a team and lead a team. I, I think those are the skills of the future because you know adaptability, how to learn new tools. I mean, if we think about the emergence of in the last thirty years, what tools students have to them in their learning that weren't there before and what's going to come out later, right? You're gonna to have to be able to learn things pretty quickly, right? Adapt, change, uh, communicate it to others, understand what if others can't change, right? Change is hard. So it's that emotional part, managing that, having emotional intelligence, leading people. So I, I think the, the people skills are gonna be really important going forward as we manage the technological side. In today's day and age especially, um, I and we feel a great obligation to be preparing global citizens, mm -hmm. given the um, world that they're going to live in, work in, um, be community members and leaders within. At its core, it means uh, understanding, um, appreciating, and respecting cultures and identities beyond your own. A global citizen, um, regardless of where you're calling home, 
needs to have a, a cultural competency and an ability to navigate this increasingly global world, respect for language, culture, religion, identity, family, ethnicity, ancestry, customs, traditions, all of our international students coming in, lead that effort and add to that effort. True for their college and university experiences, certainly true for their professional and their community lives. Hey, this is Z. I'm the founder and CEO of FindingSchool.com, a Boston-based educational search engine that connects thousands of US and Canada private school with over 1.6 million users globally. So founded about 13 years ago, the Finding School mission has always been to help the parents to get access to first-handed, unbiased, and up-to-date information regarding the U.S. boarding school experience. The information, we think, can help them to better understand how the system works here and also the individual school's requirement. All of them are going to help them to make a better, more well-informed decision, which we think is one of the most important decisions in their lives. And the Finding School is going to continue to provide more service beyond that, just for your information. We truly believe in that. K-12 U.S. boarding school education is something that Vietnamese parents is currently looking for and very interesting. That's why we are in the collaboration with Ms. Hangbo's team from EDU Station and Vesetra. That's why we team up for this special U.S. boarding school edition podcast. It's the first of its kind going abroad study industry in the Vietnam. The whole goal here is trying to demystify the true boarding school experience in the U.S. Together, we travel all the way from Vietnam to the United States, covering more than 35,000 kilometers by air and more than 1,500 on the road to make it a reality for you. We visit 10 top boarding schools on the West Coast in Los Angeles area and on the East Coast, Boston and New York regions. And we conduct many in-depth conversations between our host, Mr. Hong, and head of schools, share the story from current and the former Vietnamese students, and also filmed a lot of school highlights that will really speak to the characteristic of the school. Thanks for watching this episode, and I hope you really enjoyed this. And this is just the beginning. We are continuously to roll out more service and activities that can really help Vietnamese parents and the students for their lifelong journey at top U.S. boarding school. Thank you.